Chair Russell, the meeting is now live. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'd like to I welcome you to the, we are getting some feedback from potentially Elizabeth. Um, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Special Events Advisory Committee meeting for August 24th, uh, 2022. It is 9.31 in the, morning, in the morning, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. My name is Paul Russell, and I represent Lower Sackville. I'd also like to acknowledge that the Halifax Regional Municipality is located in Mi'kma'ki, the uh, traditional and unceded lands of the Mi'kmaq people. The municipality acknowledges the peace and friendship treaty signed in this territory and recognizes that we are all treaty people. So at this point, I'd like to run through the role and just uh, make sure that uh, everybody's audio and video are working. Uh, so let's start with uh, Councillor Mancini. Good morning. Tony, you're muted. Try it again. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Todd Bremen, good morning. Morning, morning, sir. How are you doing today? Doing great, thank you. How are you doing? Outstanding. Joining you from the beautiful Halifax waterfront down at Historic Properties. Just happy to be here. That's awesome. Allison Gillen, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone else. Ross Jefferson, good morning. Uh, good morning, Councillor and uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning to uh, everybody else on the call. Thank you. Um, Mark Shea, I don't see is with us this morning. Gordon Stewart, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and good morning, everyone. Elizabeth Taylor, good morning. How is your audio at this point? You're muted. Hi, I've switched to my phone and now it's perfect. So that's, okay. that's what I'm going to do. Good Thank stuff. You. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, and Sherry Dillman, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good stuff. Good morning. Um, I don't see Rosalind Smith with us. So hopefully that will be okay. And Andrea, good morning. Good morning, Chair Russell. So with, with that, uh, let's move on. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of July 13th, 2022. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? Thank you, Gordon. Can I have a seconder, please? I'll second, Ross. Thank you, Ross. Are there any errors or omissions in the minutes? Not seeing any, all in favor of the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Great, thank you. The minutes pass. Uh, the approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions. Andrea, are there any changes to the agenda? I see that we have both presenters, so I wouldn't anticipate any. Uh, yes, Chair Russell. Uh, we have no additions or deletions from the clerk's office, and you are correct. Our first presenter is now present in the meeting. Beautiful, thank you. Um, and so can I have a motion to approve the order of business as presented, please? Motion to approve. Thank you, Allison. And Todd, uh, would you be willing to second that? Happy to second that, Chair. Beautiful, thank you. Are there any changes from the committee? Not seeing any. Um, are uh, all in favor of the order of business as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed aye. say nay. Great, thank you. Business arising out of the minutes? Not seeing any, okay. Call for declaration of conflicts of interest. And I don't see any there. Correspondence, over to the clerk. Do we have anything? Uh, Chair Russell, there's no correspondence for this meeting. Okay, thank you. And do we have any petitions? Uh, there was no petition submitted to the clerk's office. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, a presentation about the 2022 Sport Cross Country National Championships. Um, so uh, the speaker is Greg Knight, uh, and I'm going to hand the floor to Greg. Uh, good morning, Greg. I see that you're in the meeting, but I don't see you yet. Hello, so, everyone. Can you hear me all right? We can hear you just fine. Awesome. And we can see, we cannot see the presentation anymore. Was there a second ago?
just a moment, just a slight technical issue and it will be shared in just a minute. Sure. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you very Perfect. much, Andrea. Perfect. Um, am I allowed to start any time, Mr. Chair? Yep. Go ahead, Greg. You have 10 minutes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thank you uh, to the Special Events Advisory Committee for welcoming me here today and allowing me to present to everyone. Uh, on behalf of uh, Dalhousie University and St. Mary's University, as the hosts of the 2022 Cross Country National Championships for Youth Sports, uh, I'm here to uh, share a little bit of information with you today. My name is Greg Knight. I am the Assistant Director of Athletics and Recreation at St. Mary's University. Uh, and I'll be sharing a bit of information about the event that we're gonna be bringing here in uh, mid-November this year. Next slide, please. A little bit about what we're gonna be going on today or talking about today. I'll give you a little bit of information about youth sports in general, some of the hosting information, the championship details listed there, uh, some of the numbers, the meat and potatoes of why we're here today to talk and what to talk about, and a little bit about our marketing and communications plan. Next slide. Next slide. So U Sports is the national governing body of university sport in Canada. It was formerly branded as a Canadian Inner University Sport or CIS, which some may be more familiar with. Uh, it is essentially the NCAA of Canada. Um, a lot of people are familiar, more familiar with the NCAA. Uh, and U Sports is comprised of 56 member schools across the country. There's four conferences, Can West, Ontario, Quebec, and Atlantic University Sport. And Annually, uh, U Sports hosts 21 national championships each and every year. Next slide, please. So the host for the 2022 Cross Country National Championships is a co-host bid uh, from Dalhousie University and St. Mary's University. Uh, these, this championship was bid on several years ago, um, and we have not hosted this, uh, this event before, either of the universities. Uh, and these national championships, so not just cross country, but all of the national championships, they, they go on a kind of rotational basis by conference, conference to conference as years go on. So there is the possibility that this event may be hosted uh, in Halifax, in HRM in the future, um, but it would be probably four, five, six years kind of down the road um, uh, sort of thing. Next slide, please. One more. So the location for the event is going to be at uh, the links at Brunello, uh, which is you can see pictured there in the background. Uh, really great backdrop for these national championships. Uh, we're going to have over 300 runners that we're going to be welcoming to the HRM and bringing them to this lovely site um, where, where they're going to compete for a men's national championship and a women's national championship title. Next slide, please. A little bit about the schedule of events. So officially practice begins on Thursday, November 10th. Uh, Friday, November 11th, we have our breakfast banquet, uh, as well as a number of technical meetings and some more practice. And then Saturday, November 12th is the event uh, itself where the competitions will take place. Um, and, uh, and again, those will all be out at Brunello. We'll have a, a, a small award ceremony at the end of that event at Brunello as well. Next slide, please. What you'll see in, inset here into the slide is the course map. Uh, and I also included this as a single standalone image file uh, for consideration if anyone had any interest in kind of zooming in there. Um, so this course is a two kilometer long loop and it's going to take place, the race course will take place over a mixture of grass, gravel slash dirt paths, as well as the fairways. and this race course is going to feature a split start and finish line. And, and the reason for that is that we wanted to have a that great straightaway there at the finish line that you can see inset there. It'll make for some really great pictures and hopefully we'll have a kind of a tight finish there to, to really build up kind of the drama towards the end of the race, if you will. But also uh, it allows us to get some great crowd control uh, 
on the finish line because that is typically where we will see our biggest um, our, our our biggest kind of crowd draw, if you will. Uh, and also, it allow we have a wider swath of area there. Um, from a safety perspective, as those runners come through, they do tend to uh, collapse after they, they, they're finished running their eight kilometers. Uh, I tend to collapse after I run eight, uh, eight feet. So uh, it's, uh, it's quite good for them. Next slide, please. So the dates, as I've already kind of talked about, so the official practice competition and competition schedule begins no, Thursday, November 10th, but we will see a lot of the, or a good number of the teams, especially those from Toronto West, will be arriving on November 8th and 9th. And that's mainly so that they, they can acclimatize to the time change. So the official practices begin Thursday, November 10th, banquet practice Friday, November 11th, competition Saturday, November 12th. And typically, we will do a teardown and a departure on Sunday, November 13th. There may be some teams that do stay a little bit longer on, on Monday, November 14th, or Tuesday, November 15th as well. Next slide, please. Next slide. So a little bit about the numbers of what we can expect to see here. Um, so it's a little bit difficult with this particular sport to anticipate how many attendees you will have at this slice in time where we're at right now, because all of the qualifying, all of the qualifying for this event is based off the standards of the running, the pack of runners across the country as we kind of go through the competition season. So the competition season will begin in earnest in a couple of weeks time uh, at a number of events across the country. Um, so somebody who may have qualified last year under a certain time may not qualify this year type of thing. However, I, using past uh, races or championships as a good indicator, we can roughly expect to have around 175 female competitors, 175 male competitors, approximately 30 coaching staff, uh, and then probably about 15, maybe 20 uh, team staff, so therapists, mental performance coaches, nutritionists, et cetera, to go along with them. So a total uh, projected participant pool, so that's the people who are actively involved in the event, uh, is around 395, 400 people. Next slide, please. So in addition to the competition participants, so again, athletes, coaches, team staff, uh, we expect that there will be several spectators and volunteers parents, family members that are coming to these championships from, from abroad, coming to Halifax to watch their loved ones competing or coaching. Uh, and in general, what we're expecting, based, again, based off kind of what previous championships across the country have seen around 150 to 200 spectators, around 30 volunteers, some of which will come from places like CBRM or uh, from, from Moncton or PEI or, or whatnot, but some will also come from away, uh, from Ontario and Quebec. Uh, as well as we expect to see some media people uh, from, from Ontario coming in for this as well. Next slide, please. So for the accommodations, due to the number of people that we have, uh, we have coming in for this event from abroad, we've sourced our accommodations from two different, two different uh, hotel providers. So up top, you'll see the picture. We're uh, Westin Halifax is one of our venues, as well as the Atlantica Hotel Halifax, pictured at the bottom there. We have a room block of 300 for the week at the West End and 250 for the week at the Atlantica. And it is anticipated that on average, each participant will be staying for four nights. Um, and we have the room blocks at each of those hotels from Tuesday, November 8th and running through until Sunday, November 13th. Uh, and just one note on the accommodations, the West End will also be our banquet, our breakfast banquet provider as well for, um, for the Friday morning. Next slide, please. So transportation, it's, uh, you know, that's been a unique challenge with a lot of events lately and certainly over the past uh, couple of years. So there's been a, uh, when we started looking at uh, sourcing vehicles or putting a hold on some, on some vehicles for these groups to, to be able to move their, their athletes or their coaches or team staff around the town, it certainly seemed like there was, you know, some limitations to the supply. So what we're going with is we are partnering with our, uh, our, our transportation partner, Coach Atlantic, to reserve some buses and we'll be running a shuttle service. So that'll be running on a predetermined kind of schedule that will go between the West End, 
Atlantica and out to Brunello on those official practice days uh, and, and competition days, of course, as well, uh, to be able to kind of get people back and forth. And it is- Ray, so. sorry, uh, you have 30 seconds left. Okay, sounds good. Let's keep going. Next slide. Little bit about our budget. So this is the projected budget. I have included that in the files as well. Um, this budget was informed through the knowledge of different costs associated with uh, previous championships, as well as our experience in athletics and recreation. And our contingency for the bottom line is that we will be uh, will be you know reducing certain expenses, whether that's equipment rental, banquet uh, expenses, transportation, uh, and and trimming up the the transportation schedule. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be utilizing U Sports website and social media accounts for this. We'll be hiring some local photographers as well to enhance that social media coverage. Next slide. Our webcast, we've partnered with a local broadcast company, Universum, and they'll be providing the webcast services. This will also be going out via the U Sports website and via CBC Gem, who is U Sports national media partner. Next slide. Uh, Greg, I would uh, ask you to wrap it up at this point. Yes, sir. Uh, and we'll be engaging with the local media, our communications professionals from our uh, organizing committee. And I believe that is it. Thank you very much. There we go. Thank you very much, Greg, uh, for that presentation. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the information that you were able to provide to us. At this point, I would like to open it up to questions by members of the committee. So if you have any questions, uh, please indicate that in the in the chat, and uh, then we'll move through the list as, as we get them. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Mancini. Thank you, Jerry. Hey, Greg, thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, are, are there any para-athletes as part of this competition? Could you repeat the question? Sorry, you cut out there um, for me. Are there any uh, para-athletes as part of this competition? Uh, no, generally not. There are no para-athletes at this competition. Uh, and my second question is, quickly, you had the slide up with your expenses, 83K, uh, and you had a loss in there. Can you explain that to me a little bit? Why you, are you anticipating a loss? Did I read that correctly? Yeah, so the... so. As it stands right now, without any without any municipal funding or any other funding sources, um, we haven't. Just to be clear, we haven't applied for any other funding sources. That uh, that loss will be absorbed by the university athletic departments. So split between Dow and uh, Dow and St. Mary's, and part of this is you know we're trying to we're trying to bring a good experience not only to our athletes but to the athletes that are going to be coming from St. Evax, Acadia and whatnot and uh, as these things go you know it's been a while since any either Dalhousie or St. Mary's have hosted a, uh, a national championship event here in Halifax and it was high time that we applied for one so it, it is one of those things that uh, you know it, it part of running these types of events is unfortunately that uh, you don't you can only pass down so much of the the general costing to the participant base uh, which you can see in the uh, in some of the banquet fees that is kind of being passed back down to the um, to the to the participants of the event um, but yeah that is in general those the any loss will be incurred by the athletic departments okay thanks Greg thank you Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you thanks. very much Thank you very much, Councillor Mancini. Um, so I'm going to uh, ask a couple of questions. I, uh, we have one from um, uh, from Elizabeth, uh, wondering why you didn't apply to support Nova Scotia for funding. And uh, that was uh, one of the things that I was wondering as well, is would you be, or have you considered applying to the province for uh, any funding, or is this strictly going to rely on municipal funding? Uh, so one of the, so from a sport Nova Scotia perspective, uh, the, you know, the, the Canadian sport model does not currently include the university sport model underneath this, i.e. we are not members of said sport Nova Scotia or just like uh, a, a college or a university isn't a member underneath say uh, Sport Ontario or, or anything like that. They do report up to U Sports, which reports to Sport Canada. So. That's all to say we don't have access to the Sport Nova Scotia funding side of things. Um, so certainly that was kind of brought up in some of our initial committee meetings. 
from the province's standpoint, um, we had begun looking at some of those uh, sources, um, but we wanted to focus on the municipal funding where this was this was being hosted within HRM. Uh, we wanted to make that our priority to 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 apply for those funds. Okay, and if you don't get the funding, then you'll be in that deficit position that uh, Councillor Mancini was talking about. Indeed. Okay. Um, uh, this is going to be this is scheduled for November in yep. the twenty twenty. One twenty-two uh, winter. The first snow date was November twenty-fourth. In the 2020, 2021 year, it was November third. What happens if the weather is absolutely horrible? That's the great thing about this event, and there is a number of uh, there's a number of images I actually included in my first slide deck that uh, actually showcase some of the adverse weather environments uh, that these runners uh, they compete in. Um, so if it snows, we're running in the snow. If it rains, we're running in the rain. Well, not me personally, but if it <laughs> uh, but if it snows, they're running in it. If it rains, they're running in it. Okay. And is there any risk of, of cancellation of this event for, um, I'm, I'm going to pull a, uh, just an example of COVID because everybody is using that as an example, but if, the, if there is a massive uh, cancellation, what happens and what costs are we out? Yeah, so that is one of the kind of the big, the big questions of the day, right? And uh, one of those things that it's it's a little hard to foresee how the event landscape, not just in terms of this, but in terms of like, for instance, here I have 85 events that I, I'm in charge of running on behalf of St. Mary's University from a varsity athletic standpoint. And it's one of those things that uh, it, it keeps me up at night a few sometimes, but uh, it's a little hard to predict how things are going to go. I suspect that there will be an uptick in COVID cases along with flu season as we go along. Uh, what has happened in terms of events at the youth sports level, national championships or otherwise over the past two years, is that if there is a cancellation or a delay that they have been honoring the host commitment, so i.e. they haven't been moving on to a different municipality or a different location to host the event, they have been, if a cancellation or a, a postponement is needed, they've been coming back to said municipality or host venue uh, at, a, at a later date in time. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gordon, go ahead. Uh, my question was really about looking at other private or corporate sponsors. Uh, have you done any of this in the past or, or is this something you, that you don't normally do? So we do have some members that are trying to source some some corporate sponsorship and some different sponsors uh, through the through the community. Um, but the landscape is quite difficult for these type of events right now. Uh, we do have sponsors within both of our athletic departments um, that we've partnered with. Some of those will be in kind sponsors. So they're. For instance, Coach Atlantic might be giving us a bit of a discount in terms of in kind for this because of the volume that each of our athletic departments put through there, and they'll likely be added on to the sponsor list for that. That's just an example. Um, but in the landscape right now, it is fairly difficult to source kind of cash sponsorships, but it is something we're actively going after. Okay, thank you. I, I have one final question, and that, is, and that is you mentioned two hotels. Why are they so far away? So both of our athletic departments have pre-standing agreements with uh, the Dalhousie, with the West Inn, and with uh, with the Atlantica Hotel. And so, and really, as we got further out, as we were looking at different venues to host at, and there's a number of different golf courses that we were considering. And as we got down to it, it was really tough. There was no one venue that was going to be kind of the the source all for for this the size of or the volume of participants we were looking at, and so what we came to the determination of is let's just go with our two host kind of sponsors or not sponsors but agreement partnership agreements that we have with the Atlantic and Western respectively, and uh, let's kind of enhance that relationship that we have with them. Okay. Super. Thank you very much, Greg. I don't see any further uh, questions in the chat. So, so again, thank you for, uh, for your presentation and for the information. Um, we found that very helpful and we will discuss it uh, a little bit later in the meeting.
Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You as well. The next item on the agenda is another presentation. Uh, this is for the 2024 Juno Awards, and the speakers are Alan Reed and Celine Seguin. I hope I didn't mangle that last name too, uh, too badly, and I apologize if I did. Um, so Alan and Celine, I, Alan, I see that you're with us. Uh, so go ahead, the floor is yours for 10 minutes. Alan, I can't hear it. There we are. The presentation is displayed. Alan, I can't hear you yet. You might be muted. And Andrea, I see that Celine has joined the meeting but is not a participant yet. There we go. There we are, Alan. There is some echo on your end, but uh, go ahead. You have 10 minutes. Thank you, Chair Russell, and to all the members of the Special Event uh, Advisory Committee, good morning. Thanks for having us on. Uh, as well, Andrea, thanks for all your help in uh, preparing us for today. Uh, my name is Alan Reed. I'm the President and CEO, and along with me today is Celine Sagan, who is our VP of Business Administration from the Canadian Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, also known as CARIS. And CARIS is the umbrella organization of the Juno Awards, Music Counts, and also the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. And so we're going to walk you through a brief presentation and then happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, for 51 years, the Junos have been celebrating the best in Canadian music, and we are absolutely honored that Halifax is interested in hosting the Junos again in 2024. Now, the Junos have been traveling across Canada for over 20 years now, and we were last in Halifax back in 2006. That's the year that Brian Adams was actually inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame, and Michael Buble was the big winner that night with four Junos. Uh, Andrea, next slide, please. Now, everyone knows about the Juno Award broadcast, but Keras is much more than just an award show. Uh, we have four pillars in our mandate. Uh, the first is to educate, and we do that through our music education charity, Music Counts. We also help develop artists through programs like the Alan Slate Juno Masterclass and content series that Juno TV creates for us. Uh, we celebrate our artists at the Junos, which everybody obviously knows and sees, and we honor Canadian icons at the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. We like to say that we're with artists from birth to myth. We give them their first instrument when they're in school. We see them through the trajectory of their career into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. Next slide, please. Now, the Junos create a substantial economic impact, averaging approximately $12 million in the cities that we visit. And we also shine a national spotlight on the host city with our broadcast. And we also have a global reach on our social platforms, as well as our partners and all the artists who attend. We also invest in the next generation of artists. And this is very important to us through our organization, Music Counts. To date, we have now awarded over $16 million worth of instruments and equipment to schools and communities all across Canada. Next slide, please. So what can the city of Halifax expect from the Junos when they're in town? Well, along with bringing you a blue chip event that is absolutely turnkey, we really want a partnership that is gonna be meaningful and collaborative. We will work very closely with your tourism and provincial music association to understand what it is and why you wanna host the Junos and how you can best leverage your objectives off of this event. Every city that's hosted the Junos in the last decade has had very specific goals about what they want to achieve. And obviously, I don't need to tell you, Halifax is known for its incredibly rich musical culture and hospitality. You have an incredibly diverse music scene in the province. And again, we're looking forward to shining a light on that. And diversity and inclusion are very important to Karis and also our partner, CBC. And if you had a chance to watch this year's Juno broadcast, you'll get a very clear sense of exactly what that is and why it's so important to us. Uh, CBC is an incredible partner, and they've been helping us bring the Junos, uh, not just through the broadcast, but literally bring it to life throughout the entire year, along with other partners as well. Uh, next slide, please. Over to Selena. Hi, everyone. Um, so now we'll take you through some of our highlights that are doing events and programming. Next slide. We are having a hard time hearing you, if you wouldn't mind getting closer to the mic. Is this better? 
it's a little better. We'll go ahead, please. Okay, I'll try to just speak a little louder. We want to highlight some of our larger events. As you can see, many of them attract thousands or more attendees while engaging people of all ages. You know, fanfare, an event where people can come and meet. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to interrupt again, uh, if you don't mind, Celine. Um, members of the committee, are you okay with the audio coming in? I see head shaking. Um, no, it's hard to hear. It's hard to hear. Okay. Um, can you hear now? We can hear that better, but of course there is an echo because there are two devices. So I wonder uh, if you could mute your computer and then that would take care of it. Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, but again, with that echo. Yes, we're just working on that. Alan's just muting his speaker. Can, oh, no, we're still working on it. I am muted. No, you're not. Your speaker is muted. But your mic is not. Andrea, can you take care of that, please? Your mic. Yes, your I will. Mic. Yeah, Alan just needs to mute his mic. Just, uh, if you look at I'm just going to mute him. Oh, Thank okay, you. perfect. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Celine. Let's see how this goes. Okay, testing, testing. And it's his, still. His speaker is still. Go ahead. We'll we'll do what we can. Okay. <laughs> we wanted to highlight some of our larger events. As you can see, many uh, of them attract a thousand or more attendees while engaging people of all ages. Juno Fanfare, an event where people can come and meet and greet their favorite artists. This is an event that has traditionally been taking place in a shopping center, but it's really an, a location that is accessible, easily accessible uh, for all individuals. Juno Fan Fest, uh, Juno Fan Fest, Juno Fest, I should say, a staple during Juno Week. This is where we activate and work with many local venues of any size and work with lo a local producer to book shows uh, of all different genres of music. And this is an event where we would see a lot of our Juno nominees participate along with local our artists and bands. And of course, as we as we call it, the jewel of the Junos, the songwriter circle. I don't know if any of you uh, went to it uh, in 2006, but this is an intimate event where songwriters tell the story behind their song. It's always hard to explain the feeling you get from this event, uh, but it's an event you do not want to miss. And of course, our opening night awards, which was formerly known as the Juno Gala Dinner and Awards and broadcasts. I won't dig deep into those events, uh, just knowing that we are short for time, um, especially since we had audio issues. <laughs> so next slide, please. A few of our other events we wanted to call out are Junior Junos, which is an event that we engage with families with little children. This is an event that is evolving, but is typically a short concert with some of our children, uh, children's album of the year nominees. Our honoring ceremony, which is becoming more of our key, a key event uh, in our Juno week, is a traditional ceremony where we engage and work with a local cultural consultant and produce an event to celebrate the Indigenous artists nominees. Another event that we are seeing some evolution is stories from the studio. Uh, attendees hear stories from the producers and engineers behind some of the biggest hits. It's often in, uh, hosted in conjunction with a post-secondary institution as a learning opportunity for students who are eager to learn more about the music industry. Next slide. And as Alan already alluded, um, CBC is, there's no one better suited to help tell our artist stories than CBC. They've been an integral partner of ours since 2018, and they dig deep for the Junos. Leading up to the broadcast, they put a four hour, uh, four hours of program uh, together telling our artist stories, which is the perfect lead up to the biggest night in, mu in Canadian music. Next slide. When the Junos, oh, uh, next slide. When the Junos come to a city, uh, as Alan already said, we work. We want to work very closely with them to understand their objectives as to why they're hosting so we can do what we can to help them achieve those objectives. What we've heard so far is that professional development and community, including the city's efforts in the music industry in Juno Week and amplifying voices of Nova Scotian artists and are in very important. As we continue to work with the bid committee, we will work on defining these further and ensuring they are part of our mutual goals and objectives. Next slide. And back to Alan. Thank you. Sorry, Chair Russell, can you hear me now? We can. Go ahead. 
Great. So uh, celebrating the year in music is only part of what we do. Uh, we're also helping build the future of the Canadian music industry. Next slide, please. So Music Counts is Canada's music education charity associated with Keras. And for 25 years now, they've been putting instruments in the hands of kids who need them most. This year alone, they awarded $875,000 worth of instruments equipment to schools and another 500,000 to community music programs. They've also been developing online music education resources to help support teachers. Uh, examples of that are Kanata, which is a contemporary indigenous artist and their music uh, program learning module, as well as Black Music Matters, which is focused on hip hop and social justice in Canada. Next slide, please. Garrison and Music Counts have multiple initiatives and programs that focus on the next generation of music industry professionals. Uh, one that we're very proud of is the Alan Slate Juno Masterclass, which mentors artists each year through an intensive two-week program. And Halifax's own Neon Dreams actually are a great example of success of the program. Uh, they were with us a few years back and actually went on to win the Juno for Breakthrough Group of the Year in 2020. And while Music Counts also has programs that are helping educate the next generation through their programs like Music Counts Track, uh, they also have uh, scholarships, the Accelerate Scholarship and their Amplify Scholarship programs. Next slide, please. Keras is also committed to dismantling systemic racism, and we are very proud of the work that we're doing with organizations like Advance, which is Canada's Black Music Business Collective, and the industry initiative of breaking down racial barriers. Uh, we also make sure that we apply a lens on diversity and exclusivity to all of our programming. Next slide. Now, the Junos has evolved from an industry awards evening to a week-long festival, and our evolution does not stop there. We celebrate Canadian music and their achievements at all levels all year round. And it's been a very challenging last two and a half years, as I'm sure you can imagine, not only for Keras, but also for the music industry, uh, especially to the artists and the live music community. And as we work and sort of recover, uh, we are very certain the Junos will bring a lot of civic pride and an emotional and cultural connection to the people of Halifax and Nova Scotia in 2024. Uh, next slide. That is the end of our presentation. I just want to again say thank you for your time and happy to answer any questions you have. Great. Thank you very much, Alan and Celine. Uh, once again, for members of the committee, uh, if you have Questions, please uh, indicate that in the chat and uh, we will move through the list. Go ahead, Gordon. I have just lost audio again in hearing you. My apologies. Alan, we can hear you. <laughs> my, my question is about uh, earlier you're defining, try to uh, shape the, the local objectives you define that in, in each particular area, people have a set of objectives. I'm just wondering who do you see as your partners here in defining what those local objectives should be? Can you hear me? I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, Alan is just working. I'm having some audio issues. I'm not hearing you again. <laughs> Um, so yeah, our key partners in terms of defining those local objectives would primarily be our, the bid committee. Um, and then uh, once it's confirmed that Halifax is hosting, uh, that would turn into a host committee. And those are typically uh, members of the music community, um, uh, the tourism, the city, uh, anybody who has a seat on the host committee, that's kind of who our direct uh, link is and who we would be defining those objectives with. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Mancini, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Alan and Celine. Uh, uh, appreciate the presentation. To, uh, you know, we saw what the last two and a half years have done to our local artists. Uh, and so um, the Junos, uh, I'm sure, is a, a definite help to the industry. i also very pleased to see what Karis and, and Music Counts have done to support our youth. This, you may or may not be aware of this, but this municipality leads the way in this country. We just approved again, we saw yesterday's budget, yesterday's council meeting, we do what's called supplemental funding, where we're the only municipality in the country that puts aside money every year for arts for our youth. So it's an average of about $4 million every year. And so it has a huge impact on the youth uh, for music and other arts too. So uh, this, this council st uh, strongly supports the arts. And so it, it's a pleasure to hear about the, uh, about the Junos coming back again. The question I have is we talk about the week long festival and you talk about local venues. 
uh, have you identified some of those venues and the location? Because uh, I, I'm not sure how well you are aware of our geography here, but you know we're the size of Prince Edward Island. Uh, we have um, uh, two amazing downtowns, other downtowns too, but two major downtowns. Uh, uh, but we also have a geographical areas where Council Russell's from and the Sackle area, other areas. So when you take a look at your week long event, are you looking at uh, just be, uh, uh, just the Halifax downtown or beyond Halifax or even other parts of the uh, municipality? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously from uh, our major events with the broadcast and uh, opening night awards, they would most likely take place obviously at the Scotiabank Centre and the Convention Centre, uh, just from uh, just from a size perspective, sure. we need uh, quite a large venues. And as far as Juno Fest goes, that event has a lot of flexibility. And again, working with the host committee, they could be these uh, local venues can be activated from anywhere. And then as long as we, you know, we put it, we would be putting up a Juno Fest banner and they would be all part of our uh, Juno Week uh, events. So we're not looking to just uh, just do a hub per se, and not that we wouldn't look to try to um, congregate some of our events to kind of create a, a, a vibe in, in, in one area, whether it's a downtown, um, but we would look to activate the city as much as possible so that people know, hey, the Junos are in town and you know everybody can be part of the Juno Week. You know, and that's encouraging because uh, obviously the area would be Halifax and Dartmouth, you know, and uh, and of course uh, Sackville and other many other places within the, the municipality. Opportunity to go out to even She Harbor or Shore Club <laughs> and all of these places. These are great venues, and uh, that's they're all part of HRM. So please consider that if that uh, if we pr proceed to go beyond just the uh, downtown Halifax. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Allison. Thank you very much. Um, just looking to confirm, is there are there any other jurisdictions competing for this event in 2024? At, at this time, we're working very closely with Halifax. Um, so not to say that there aren't any, but we are uh, we are very geared towards Halifax at this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other speakers in the list, uh, so I've just got a couple of questions. Um, uh, this is obviously 2022. Uh, the Junos would be scheduled for 2024. When is the funding required? Um, so we have uh, we've had that actually uh, that question um, with the bid committee, and so as it relates to the funding and the flow of funds. Uh, we'll work with uh, the municipality and the province as to when uh, oftentimes the municipalities want to uh, work it in with two kind of fiscals uh, and we're happy to work with that. So, it, or if you want to work uh, till later, that is also fine. So there's not um, a defined date. We work uh, on that together on making sure that it works for the municipality and the province as well as for us. Okay. Another addition to that too, uh, Chair Russell, is the uh, board will be meeting on September 20th uh, to discuss uh, the potential proposal of Halifax uh, hosting in 2024. Uh, even though that's not tied to the actual funding, uh, we'll be meeting with the board to discuss uh, the bid uh, at our board meeting. Okay. Um, we do start our budget process around that time, September, October. Uh, so we, we take a a fairly healthy length of time to uh, to do that. So if we could get that information sooner, uh, it would be helpful. Um, the, my, my next question or set of questions, I guess, is related to the uh, last time that the Junos were here uh, or, or previous Juno events. Um, are we able to get a copy? Uh, I don't know if, if uh, Elizabeth and Sherry have this or not. Um, but the host committee's final report, uh, has that been, uh, have you worked with HRM uh, to be able to provide that? Um, the, the second thing is uh, your, the request for them is for $750,000, but it also talks about an operational budget being separate from that. And I'm wondering, uh, do we have the operational budget from the previous time that it was being hosted? So uh, Boslin and I were actually not uh, with Karis in 2006. Uh, we will have to actually go back through our older files. Um, oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth has, has had a final report. So I was gonna say, we know it's in our archives, we'll have to find it, but if Liz already has it, that's great. Um, so she can obviously share that with you. 
Okay, and I'm wondering, Elizabeth, if uh, that operational budget is contained within that or is it available separately? There is reference to it, but the budget itself is not contained in the uh, report. We have been working um, with London, Ontario, and uh, they've been very open with sharing their files. So I can make the request to London to see if they would share that operational budget. Uh, that's, that's completely the responsibility of the host society and nothing to do with the municipality as far as funding. True, uh, I recognize that uh, the information would simply be helpful. Yeah. So, th thank you very much, Elizabeth, uh, and thank you, Celine and Alan. I don't see any further uh, questions or requests for questions in the chat. Um, so again, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, we will uh, take that away and uh, discuss it a little bit later on in this meeting. Well, Chair Russell, thank you very much for having us again. Apologies for the, uh, the audio issues we had today. Thank you. You have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. So the moving ahead with the agenda, uh, we have no information items being brought forward. Uh, we do have uh, the next item on the agenda is 9.1.1. This is the 2022 U Sports Cross Country National Championships. And this is the report that came to the committee that we would now talk about. Um, so I'm wondering if someone could Put the motion on the floor uh, so that we can talk about uh, that report. Anyone? I'll get us kicked off then. I'll move that the Special Events Advisory Committee recommend that Halifax Regional Council approve an event grant in the amount of $15,000 from the 2022-23 Community and Events Reserve Q621 to fund St. Mary's University for the 2022 U Sports Cross Country National Championships event contingent on the in-person event taking place. Thank you very much, Ross. Ross. Thank you very much, Councillor Mancini. Go ahead, Ross. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, just to appreciated the uh, presentation earlier. Um, the, uh, the the numbers and the math make sense. I think, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the initial request um, may have been for um, uh, a bit more than was asked, but I think the uh, the recommendation coming from staff is uh, is prudent. So uh, uh, I'm uh, very happy to support the motion. Okay. Thank you. And I don't see any further questions in the chat. I do appreciate uh, that we had the presentation from uh, both of these committees. Uh, Gordon, go ahead. Just one comment. The, the one thing I'm actually liking about this is the, one of the things we struggle with is that we try to have a lot of our, our events crunched straight into the center core of the year. And this is kind of nice to see something happening in November. So uh, that's one of the things I think is particular that, that can encourage other events to happen besides uh, th this particular one that would be very encouraging for our area too. Good, good, good job. And, and thank you very much for, uh, for staff and, and the organizing committee for recognizing that and, ha and having it uh, in the extended season. Um, once again, I don't see any further uh, requests for questions. So all in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Great, that motion passes. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is 9.1.2, major hosting bid for the Juno Awards. And the motion is in the chat. I'd be happy to put that forward, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, put the following motion on the floor of the Special Events Advisory Committee recommend that Halifax Regional Council approve a contribution in the amount of $750,000 to the Canadian Academy of Recording Artists and, and Chorus for hosting rights to host the 2024 Juno Awards contingent on Halifax being selected as the host city. So moved. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. Do we have a seconder? Thank you, Gordon. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Mancini. Is there anything on that? So, you know, these are exactly the types of events. I mean, you compare the two events we just discussed, they're, they're quite different. You know, the U Sports one, 
you know, it's a, it's a small investment, uh, worthwhile. Uh, but, you know, the impact of this one, the Juno, is significant. And uh, what it gets me excited, again, you know, the contribution to grassroots, of course, but we are bringing people into the community. The economic drive is there also. If they can expand their festival to go beyond just the downtown Halifax area. That's exciting for me also. Uh, you know, the TV audience, uh, the global attention. I um, mean, the excitement we saw with uh, Canoe 22, uh, you know, on a global na- uh, uh, um, a global level was amazing. This being on a national, but does have an extension into that global market. And, you know, as far as industry, you know, uh, you know, our industries need these, these boosts. Our hotel industries, our restaurant industries, and our arts industry definitely need the boost after the last two and a half years. So uh, I find this is um, a perfect investment uh, uh, that I, I uh, will support. We move ahead on it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. Uh, go ahead, Allison. Thank you. I just wanted to, um, Mr. Chair, follow up on the uh, question you asked uh, of our presenters around timing of when the funds would be due. I see that we're um, voting today to have this come out of the current fiscal year's uh, funds. Is there any, is that, um, would it make a difference if it, if, if it was partially funded this year and partially funded next year, or would be better to approve it as a fund, uh, as a whole fund through this year's dollars? Elizabeth? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, our recommendation would be that we would fund it in whole through this year. We have the budget available. Our, int- our intakes are closed. Um, we do not have any indication that a major hosting event for 2023 is uh, considering Halifax. And we still have left uh, 173,000 is should there be something that may come up around the $100,000 mark. But I believe we are gaining um, finances in the levy with the summer that we're having. So our recommendation would be to uh, to fund it through this fiscal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, I don't see any f- further uh, requests for a question. So if I may, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Go ahead. Chair, very quickly, uh, Elizabeth, can you uh, remind us? Uh, you, you alluded to there's a hundred thousand and change remaining in the budget if this com- comes out of it. Does that carry over into next year's budget or that just goes back in and then we, hey, we start over a brand new budget? How does that work if there's money left over? It carries over to next year, Councillor. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you, Elizabeth. Welcome. Super. Thank you very much. Uh, not seeing any further questions. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All, all opposed, say nay. Great. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, next is committee member updates, and there are none. There are no added items, and the date of the next meeting of the Special Events Advisory Committee is September 14th, 2022. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, one quick question for Elizabeth back to Juno, if I may. Uh, there we go. When do, yeah. when do, we, when do we know, uh, Elizabeth, uh, whether we're officially awarded? It sounds like, obviously, they're leaning towards us, and they want us to be the host, but when do we officially find out? Their board meeting, I believe on the 20th, he said. So we are submitting our bid on September 13th and it's in very good shape at the moment. In fact, we have back to your question regarding um, venues. We've put a hold on venues across Dartmouth, Halifax and in the contribution agreement, we are going to rural destinations that also have some songwriting or some of the more well-recognized artists that go down to some of the rural areas for at least uh, a meet and greet or, or some kind of opportunity. And so I, I would imagine by the first week of October, it will be announced. Okay, that's great. And just before I lose the floor, don't forget everybody, Friday night uh, in front of City Hall, Matt, Matt Anderson's playing one of uh, Atlantic Canada's best. So that's going to be pretty cool. There we Thanks go. For Thank, the- you. Sir. Th- Thank you for that plug, Tony. Um, <laughs> 
With that, uh, again, the date of the next meeting is uh, September 14th, 2022. So if I could have a motion to adjourn, please. That's so moved. Thank you very much, Councillor Mancini. We stand adjourned.